Russia's warning that the UN human rights resolution condemning the Syrian leadership for last week's Hula massacre risks derailing the peace plan. Moscow called it premature because the investigation's ongoing and that it's therefore putting pressure on the Security Council where Russia's resisting foreign military action. On Sunday, President Assad insisted his troops had nothing to do with the slaughter of more than 100 people in the city. He blamed armed rebel gangs for the attack and outside forces for instigating the conflict to trigger intervention. Convention. Washington, which backs the Syrian opposition and the push for regime change, admits there are plans for military action. Let's get some thoughts on this then, shall we? And talk to uh, political journalist Neil Clark. He's a contributor to Britain's Guardian newspaper. He's on the line now from Oxford via Skype. Hi there. Thanks for being on the programme. Well, why do you think then a significant body like the UN Human Rights Council has already apportioned blame before the results of the international probe? Well, I think it's very unfortunate. I think this is due to Western pressure. Because if you think back seven days ago, right from the very first time we heard about this massacre, the line from the US and Britain was the Syrian government was responsible before any evidence had appeared. And I'm afraid that there's been an awful lot of pressure put on the, uh, the UNHCR this week. And that's behind their statement, which isn't very helpful at all. Now, Moscow's uh, position here is that it's saying there are, it believes these are attempts by several countries to use the Hula tragedy to further their own interests and undermine Kofi Annan's peace plan. What do you think about that statement? I think it's absolutely correct. I think what we've got here, and the agenda is pretty obvious to anyone who's been following this, for the last 15 months, there's been an attempt by Western powers backed by uh, Arab Gulf states to topple the regime in Damascus. And uh, this reminds me, and I'm sure it will remind a lot of people too, about what happened back in the late 1990s, U Yugoslavia, a situation where the Milosevic government there was under enormous pressure as well. What we had then was Western forces backing rebels against that regime. Uh, we had a massacre, so-called massacres taking place, which were then used as a pretext for military intervention, which is, of course, what we got in the NATO bombardment of Yugoslavia. And uh, 12 months ago, we had exactly the same thing again with Libya. We had uh, atrocity stories coming out of Libya. Uh, America and Britain were at the forefront of saying, look, we've to intervene, which is what happened in the end, of course. And so it's deja vu. It's, it's like 1999 and 2011 all over again. So where from here? Have any lessons been learned? I mean, serious opposition's urging military action. Washington is voicing its readiness to act, it appears. Where do you see these calls for foreign intervention heading the next? Well, I think it, it, we, we're reaching out the, the sort of crucial point of, of, of the whole affair now. And I think that uh, the onus must be on the Western powers uh, to, to sort of back down here because uh, Russia's made it quite clear that they won't support military intervention. They, they were kind of duped over Libya and they're not going to be duped again. And the only way we can have a peaceful solution to this is if the Western powers and countries like Qatar and Saudi Arabia uh, rein in the rebels and say to them, look, uh, stop this and, and stop uh, supplying them with arms. But unfortunately, the stakes are so high here, Kevin, because uh, Syria, it, it, what happens in Syria is of enormous glo global importance because the West wants this regime to go. They want a pro-Western regime that will come in, that will be uh, uh, more pro-Israel, that will be anti-Iranian. And that would prepare the way for an attack on Iran. So the stakes are incredibly high here. And unfortunately, I don't see the West backing down. I think, unfortunately, we're going to get more and more uh, aggressive behavior from the West, more and more backing of rebels. And I'd like to see Russia and China come out now and really take a much e even firmer line on this and say, look, stop this. There is a political process in Syria. There is a new constitution. We've had elections in Syria. There's a democratic path. And I think uh, I'd like to see Russia and China really say to the West, stop, stop, stop your behavior. You said this is reaching a zenith, a crunch point. I mean, the opposition yep. wants the UN envoy to admit his plans failed. Is that likely to happen? Well, uh, you know, at the moment, uh, you know, let's face it, the, the, you know, US, Britain, France, Saudi Arabia and Qatar do not want Kofi Annan's plan to succeed. It's the Syrian government that wants it to succeed in Russia and China. And we had, I think it was on Friday, Kevin, that the Qatari prime minister said that Kofi Annan should put an absolute deadline for his plan to work. It's not helpful. And what, you know, why isn't the plan working uh, uh, so far in bringing peace? Because the rebels are still fighting. They're still using arms. Terrorist attacks have taken place in Syria. And what are the Syrian government supposed to do in response? Uh, it seems now evidence is coming out of Hula that, 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 you know, last week we were told it was a Syrian government. Now the evidence is not so clear. President Assad today in Damascus denied any involvement in that. He said it was a horrific, ugly crime. So, you know, it, it's up really to, to the people who are backing the violent rebels uh, to, to rein them in. Final brief thought on conflict spill, for want of a better word. I mean, the violence has been spreading beyond Syria into neighbouring Lebanon, as we've been reporting. What are the wider consequences if this gets worse? 
Well, I mean, we could be heading towards a major Middle Eastern war unless the West changes its policy. And, we, you know, the West is playing a very dangerous game here. Uh, Syria was a country at peace uh, 15, 16 months ago. There were peaceful protests. We, we've got democratic reform in Syria. So there's no real need for people to be using violence. And what the West is doing is criminal. What the West and Saudi Arabia and Qatar and other countries are egging this on, Israel too has been supporting regime change. What these countries are doing is criminal because we could have a major war ha happening here. Okay, thanks for your thoughts. Politics journalist Neil Clark, they're on the line from it's the right. UK.